Hello, I'm Venki Ramakrishnan, and I'm a molecular biologist working in Cambridge, England. And I've been asked to think about a world uh, that might exist in the future when we come out of the current global pandemic caused by the coronavirus. And so I was thinking about our response to the coronavirus and the effect that it has already had so far. And the first thing I noticed was a dramatic reduction in the pollution and in the noise around us. And it makes us realize the impact that humans are having on the rest of the natural world. In fact, in cities like uh, the ones in India and China, the reduction in pollution is so dramatic that people can see uh, long distances for the first time in decades. So, for example, the smog and fog is lifted from cities like Delhi and Beijing and the air is clear and they can actually see a blue sky for the first time in several decades. There are places in India where for the first time the Himalayan mountains are visible from hundreds of miles away something that has not been seen in many young people's lifetimes. This just shows you the effect we're having. And while we're here observing it, what we can see is that other species are actually extremely happy about the lockdown. Birds, butterflies, insects of all types are all thriving because the air is cleaner and uh, there's much less noise pollution. Uh, we don't realize how much uh, other species are affected by the noise we make uh, in our sort of day-to-day -day activities through all of the hundreds and thousands and millions of our machines. So it may, begs the question, when we come out of the pandemic, are we just going back to business as usual continuing to pollute the world, continuing to cause environmental destruction on a massive scale, and continuing to destroy biodiversity, thousands of species disappearing uh, as a result of our indifference uh, to the natural world? Or are we going to recognize that we exist as part of a large ecosystem and we should try to live harmoniously with it. So that's the question. And of course, there are future uh, problems that we will cause nature that we're already doing. And those are things like climate change, which are closely linked to pollution. Climate change you can think of as, a, as an extreme form of environmental pollution, uh, changing uh, the environment so drastically uh, that uh, things can uh, change irreversibly. So maybe we should recognize our place in the natural world and work with it. Try to maintain a decent standard of living, but at the same time, try to tread softly, have less of an environmental impact uh, and mitigate the impact we have on the rest of uh, life on this planet. A second thing that occurred to me is uh, in this disease, often you will hear people, especially politicians and others say, this is a disease that strikes everyone. For example, the Prime Minister of England, uh, of, of the United Kingdom, Boris Johnson, got struck down by uh, coronavirus and took several weeks uh, to recover. But this is not a disease that strikes everyone equally. Those people who are rich can sit in their nice houses uh, with their gardens. They get all of the amenities. The internet makes it possible for them to socialize and order what they need. They're not actually suffering. In fact, many of them continue to get paid or you know, they're independently wealthy and they can live off their, uh, their wealth. It is the poor who suffer, and they suffer in a double way. Firstly, the poor live in crowded conditions, 
uh, often they cannot do social distancing. They often have to go to work. And so uh, they are in much, at much greater risk of getting infected uh, by the coronavirus. So not only do they su suffer a health hazard, they also suffer economic consequences. The pandemic has resulted in a huge economic downturn in most of the world. And this means that jobs are lost, uh, people are out of work, and many of them don't know how to put food on the table. Uh, and so not only are they at higher risk for getting sick, they're also at higher risk of suffering from the other consequences of joblessness, uh, inability to provide for their family, inability to have enough food uh, to eat. So this virus is bringing out the dramatic inequalities that exist uh, in humanity, both within countries and between countries. And so when we emerge from the pandemic, we could ask what sort of world uh, would we like? Would we like a world where the current inequalities persist? Or would we like a world where everyone has a basic standard of living and everyone is guaranteed uh, certain basic rights, like the right to health care, the right to a roof over their heads, and the right to food and clean water? So we might want to work towards a society where inequalities are reduced and basic standards of living uh, are made available to all human beings. And, and this is not an easy task, but it is something that we should aspire for rather than this sort of race to the top and the race to the bottom that characterizes uh, much of human behavior uh, today. A third thing that struck me about the pandemic is the arrogance of human beings. Human beings feel that we have mastered nature, we have mastered technology, we are masters of the universe. But here you have a virus, which is a tiny virus, it can only be seen by an electron microscope. And it is so small that it, its entire genome only has about 30,000 letters. Compare that to a human genome, where we have 3 billion letters that make up our DNA that contain that code for all of the information in our genes. So 3 billion versus 30,000. And yet this tiny virus can cause huge havoc. It can cause fear, it can cause death, it can cause economic chaos, it can cause people to behave both in the best way and in the worst way. All pandemics have brought out the best and the worst in humans. In every historic pandemic, things like racism, xenophobia, fear of other countries, uh, all of these have come out in previous pandemics. And so, uh, we should think about our arrogance and our arrogance doesn't exist only in, with respect to diseases and nature. It also, ex, it also affects our financial systems. For example, we were so arrogant about how efficient our financial systems were that we didn't really plan for the 2008 financial crash, which caused huge global problems, millions of people uh, thrown out of job work, uh, increase in poverty, increase in inequality uh, throughout the world. So all of this comes from a kind of arrogance that we can master anything and we don't have to worry about the unexpected uh, and that we have no limits uh, to our power. I think a better way is to acknowledge that we don't understand everything and that we do have very serious limits uh, to our power. and. How could we prepare for that? Well, we could try to be more resilient. For example, with financial systems, we could make sure that they're not just based on the most efficient way to make money and have economic growth, but they also 
prepare for the unexpected and that if there are unexpected downturns, we prepare for societies to take care of people who are affected by economic downturns. We could have a more resilient society. Similarly, look at pandemics. I mean, Bill Gates in a famous YouTube video pointed out it's a bit like war. We spend millions, trillions on maintaining militaries throughout the world, yet we're not constantly fighting. In fact, we prefer not to have a war, and yet we're uh, prepared to spend huge amounts of money maintaining a standing military that might never have to fight a war. We do that as a kind of insurance policy so that if we're attacked, we're prepared. Well, perhaps that kind of money is better spent in preparing for real dangers, such as the dangers of pandemics. So just as we would have a military, which is most of the time not fighting war, we might want to prepare for unexpected disasters, uh, which might never come, but if they come, we're prepared. For example, in the case of pandemics, we might want to have make sure that our healthcare systems, first of all, are accessible to everybody, that they have spare capacity, that they have the technical means to deal with unexpected epidemics, that they are prepared to control, to detect and control epidemics. So all of these things require preparation. So perhaps a third thing we might do as we emerge is to become less arrogant and less uh, sort of have less of the feeling that we can control everything, but instead prepare for disasters. Disasters could be all sorts of things. They could be earthquakes, they could be hurricanes, they could be floods, or they could be pandemics, or they could be economic downturns, unexpected economic crashes. And we want to try and build a resilient society that actually prepares us for that so that the effects of these are minimized and the suffering caused by these is minimized. So these are three ways in which we can try to emerge from a, a post pandemic period into a, a better world where we are more humble. We understand our place in the world. We understand our limits and we try to be humble and learn from the mis mistakes of the past and learn about nature and about uh, the world around us. Thank you very much.